I am a geologist and I like rocks. So that means today what we're gonna do is take a bunch of rocks and we're gonna cut them up into little one inch by one inch cubes and I'm gonna tell you what they are. Welcome back to Natural Stones. My name is Ben and we make stuff out of rocks. So gonna take the rock, gonna find it, gonna cut it up, put it in the tumbler, polish them up, make them look nice, stack them, and then knock them over. Let's go find the rocks we're gonna use. This one, oh yeah. pile of rocks here. Do another cut, like a square cut, and then run them all through, and then set up the horizontal guide and cut them all into one inch blocks. Okay, so, update. I've made all the cubes, and they're not perfect cubes. I don't know if I can really get it perfectly square or not. And especially this one has some dents and dings and some weird spots because I just wanted to like bang it out the last night I was working on it. And on the edges, sometimes what the minerals do is they break along their cleavage planes and it makes a kind of a rough, broken edge look to it. Either way, they'll turn out nice. So now we're going to put them in the tumbler and hopefully they'll turn out all shiny and stuff. Let's see what happens.
gonna do my best to describe them one by one to teach you guys a little something. So, this, obviously a conglomerate. You can tell by the multiple, multiple shapes of these rocks that are all like stuck together. They have a rounded edge and there's a bunch of different sizes. You can see the way the light reflects off that. This clasp is very different from the others and they've been welded together or cemented together into a conglomerate. It's very polished. You can see that right here there's a piece of orthoclase feldspar and right here I think I think it's jasper. All right, done. This one, some kind of igneous rock or it's a metamorphic rock that's not foliated but my favorite part about this rock here are the garnets. So right here that's a garnet, that red spot, that's a garnet, small one, that's one. I just think it's really cool how it was able to cut these garnets and see them in this rock and all the edges of the crystals shine. That's all I know. This one, very cool. Just like the conglomerate, but instead, it's a sandstone. Most of these particles are sand size. Except for that one, maybe. More of a pebble, excuse me. Red oxidation bands within the sandstone. And you can see that it was either layered this way or that way. And somehow it, it polished like super nice. So it must be really well cemented together. Next. Okay, this one's one of my favorite. This rock is some sort of pegmatite. It's very hard. I think that's because of all the feldspars are so large that it's hard to get through them instead of having it's basically weaker between the crystals, but if you're just running into a straight crystal, like here, there's like only two or three. One, two, three, four. Only four crystals on this whole face right here compared to the next one, this this granite. And this is a coarse rock. Like I can obviously see all the uh, potassium feldspars, quartz, very, very coarse. It, it cooled much slower than this. So this is some kind of an orthosite because it's got so much feldspar in it. And then this is, your typical granite with a lot of potassium feldspar. This. Oh, I like this one. So I think this one is a type of marble. Most of these are calcite with epidote. Epidote is a green mineral. And the coolest thing about this is right here. You see how it has a metallic luster, that piece, and it's surrounded by oxidized, like corrodedness. So I'm guessing that that's some kind of pyrite, which is iron and sulfur. The iron in it is causing it to oxidize and that around it to turn an orange rusty color, like the rust on your vehicle. All of these uh, crystals in here are very anhedral. That means that they're very wavy, all the edges. Basically these crystals have grown a lot bigger than they are, these green crystals here. And then they had to shrink back down because they got remelted. They crystallized at, at the very end once all of the other, the whiter minerals in here crystallize. And it leaves with this very irregular pattern. This one, this is the same one that I made the coffee cup out of. It's some kind of granite. It's green and pink. And I really don't know what exactly to call this because I don't really know all the minerals in it. Yeah, feel free to like help me out in the comments because I'm not an expert. This one, is the one that I thought I was gonna have a lot of trouble with. The one cool thing about this is the brown to green transition here. So the brown is probably the chemically weathered version of the green. So like the water got all the way into this, like right here about this brown line, but it didn't really get into here. And this is closer to the host rock and it hasn't been on the surface as long as this outside part. Next, these two are both very similar put together. They have been pulled like taffy. It's like a river of quartz in there. It's pretty cool. I would call this an s tectonite that has had some real, real weird forces put on it. You can see the only true crystal is that one right there, that, that feldspar. And it's been, it's been rolled around quite a bit. Same thing here. This one's straight green and black. Not sure of the composition, but it still looks cool. This one is my favorite. It's like a galaxy. 
it's some kind of tectonite where everything has just been pulled like taffy and you get all these ribbons you even get augens like right here and you can see that the stress angle was that way and that way and it was rolling and twisting like this counterclockwise you can tell because the way it's shaped and it was it would just keep rolling because the shear stress bow, bow. This one is just a solid black green gabbro. I didn't know what to do with it. I just thought it would be cool having like a solid color. Two left. This one first. Diorite maybe? It's got some light, it's got some dark, it's got one garnet in it. Right there. Finally, this guy. So I know that this is calcite, which is really cool. It just looks cool, but I know it's calcite because you can see the divot, it's not a flat surface. So obviously that this white in here is a softer rock than the green. You can see the edge is not clear right there. And then the softer rock has been eroded down in the, in the tumbler far faster than the outside. And that just proves that different rocks and different minerals have different weathering rates because just being in the tumbler for a couple days that's a huge difference I'll, I, I'll get all the help I can get because I don't really know where all these rocks came from they came from a pile of glacial sediment that's from the river that's all where all our rocks come from right now they're all rounded that means they came from a stream and There they are, all 15 of them. Well, we did it. There they are. It's probably not in focus, but they're pretty impressive up on that shelf, all 15 of them. Each one is a different rock. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something about rocks. I sure did. And now I got 15 of them to stack and just look at, because they're cool. If you like this video and you'd like to see more like this, hit subscribe, because we got one video coming out every Thursday. And if you, Think of something cool that we haven't done yet, put it in the comments below, and I'll see if I can make it. I'm Ben, here at Natural Stones, where we make stuff out of rocks. I'll see you in the next video.